Welcome to Sound and Fury. I am Eric Wilfred Watson. And I'm you, Frank, and I'm a one-man wolf pack. Today we're going to talk about the character of Jack Reacher. Oh, yes, I'm so excited. I want to jump up and down on Oprah's couch. Oh, have you ever uh, felt this way before? Uh, Not that Jack Reacher. Oh, uh, okay. I want to talk about the actual fictional character of Jack Reacher as created by Lee Child in the books and was recently adapted as an Amazon Prime show starring Alan Richson. And the Tom Cruise movies are not what I am here to talk about, even a little bit. <laughs> Thank goodness. Coming into this video, um, I am a massive fan of the Jack Reacher books. I have read or listened to the audiobook of every single one of the 26 novels that exist. There needs to be one more. And there are, oh, I forget how many, there's several novellas and shorter stories that are also quite good. Jack Reacher is one of my favorite fictional characters of all time. Um, I left him off of, we were doing a, a protagonist's video, left him off of that because I wanted to focus more on science fiction fantasy for that video, but Jack Reacher might be my favorite protagonist, or way up there anyway. Wow. Um, so I want to talk about what makes the Jack Reacher character a fun character, why I like the books and like the TV show, and then I want to kind of go into what works and what doesn't quite work about the show, and maybe I might mention a thing or two about the Tom Cruise movie. So, Jack Reacher grew up in a military family. Um, backstory on the character, his dad was in the Marines. To be obstinate, he joined the Army. Um, <laughs> spent his entire life overseas, um, for the most part. Retired Army commanded the 110th Special Investigations Unit of the Military Police. Took out a few men in the course of your duties. And once he got out of the military, he decided he didn't want to take orders from anybody ever again under any circumstances. So be smart, don't break the law, and promise me you won't end up in another holding cell. No. That included not being tied down to one location. He wanted to go where he wanted, when he wanted. A house would just tie him down to a location, so he's intentionally homeless. He doesn't like being called a bum or homeless. He prefers the term hobo. Oh. He... He's kind of like... Um Jules Winfield uh, at the end of Pulp Fiction. He just decided to walk the earth. Right? Okay. He was in the military police. He reached the, rain, the, the rank of major before he got out of the army. Ooh. He's a brilliant investigator because he's extremely analytical by nature. Shooter was someone who knows firearms well. Bullets were small caliber, 9mm, 95 grain, that's subsonic. A silencer was used. He also knew enough to pick up his brass. This wasn't a first-timer. This was someone who knew how to conduct a quiet, effective kill. He's, they don't use the word in the books, but he's basically a numbers savant. He, extremely good with numbers. He's fascinated by numbers. Medical examiner puts the victim's time of death at around midnight last night. This morning. It's last night until 11.59 and 59 seconds, and then it becomes this morning. In an investigation, details matter. <laughs> He has an internal clock where he always knows exactly what time it is without the need to look at a watch. He just knows. <laughs> he can set himself alarm clocks in his head. If he wants to wake up at 5.30 a.m., he'll wake up at 5.30 a.m. And that's My mother-in-law can do that. Mm -hmm. I don't know how, but that's a real thing. Yeah, when people ask the Jack Reacher character how he can do that, he says, I'll let you know when I figure it out. <laughs> yeah, he, he, just, he just can. Yeah. Um, he only has three possessions. He has a toothbrush an expired passport, and a debit card where he can access his military pension. And a banana. <laughs> and a banana. Occasionally, probably a banana. <laughs> and the clothes on his back. And a pointed stick. Um, when he, when the clothes on his back get too dirty to wear anymore, he goes into a thrift shop, buys new clothes, and throws the old ones in the garbage. I'm going to pop some tags. I got $20 in my pocket. So you just go wherever you want, whenever you want? No one's always jealous. Well, yeah, that's um, an interesting approach to life. Works for me. Really, really interesting character. He is six foot five in the books. Um, just a beefy, huge mother. 
you don't want to mess with. But people are dumb and people mess with them anyway. Uh. And the physics of it usually work to his advantage. Yeah, well, you know, mass and force and... Boxer. Southpaw. Golden gloves. You know, the thing about boxing, too many rules. He's also not afraid to murder people. And I mean, I don't mean like killing in self-defense. I mean, f***ing murdering people. Oh. He'll shoot the bad guy in the head in cold blood he, and, and, and sleep like a baby at night. Like the Punisher. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very much so. Cool. But um, the Tom Cruise movies don't really get his character right, to say the least. Uh, not only because he's teeny tiny man when Jack Reacher is supposed to be the opposite of that. <laughs> Tiny Tom Cruise? Oh, hey, little guy. Forgot my sunglasses. <laughs> the Tom Cruise's kind of smug um, personality just is not the Jack help Reacher. Me help you. It's just not the Jack Reacher personality. The movies fail on every single level. I mean to beat you to death and drink your blood from a boot. Now, this is how it's going to work. Oh, have you ever <laughs> felt this way? <laughs> Well, yes, he's only like four foot nothing. The Tom Cruise movies with Jack Reacher are okay-ish movies. They're just not Jack Reacher movies. Um, They're the worst movies I've never seen. <laughs> Tom Cruise is <laughs> Tom Cruise is made worse. <coughs> <coughs> so what works and doesn't quite work in the that was, also, that was basically talking about the books. Um, what works and doesn't work in the TV show adaptation? They get the physicality of Jack Reacher close to right. I mean, I would have preferred him actually be a little taller, a little bit bigger, but... Well, it's hard to find somebody that's ex- actually ex- five. Ex- exactly. Yeah. Six three. I think the actual actor is just a smidge shorter than the description of the book, but that's okay. Yeah. I actually would have preferred an older actor. He seems too young to be somebody who's old enough to have a military pension. It's not a twist off. Show off. But Alan Richson nails the performance. He does a good job being Reacher. Um, the only problems with the character are with the writers, not with the actor. They make his character a little bit jokey. I think they're trying to make him more likable. Because in the mm-hmm. books, he's kind of a hard ass. And they're afraid maybe that he would come off as too much of a jerk if they didn't have him crack a joke here and there. Gotcha. What's a guy like that doing in jail? Zip ties? Cuffs didn't fit him. You guys recycle. And it just, if you're not a fan of the books, you wouldn't even notice. But as a fan of the books, it just seemed a little out of character. <laughs> it's, a, it's a sad state of affairs where a cold-blooded killer can't be liked because they won't tell a joke. <laughs> <laughs> but he's, 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 he's almost Spock-like in that he logically analyzes everything. And if shooting the bad guy in the head, in the back of the head, is the correct thing to do to solve the problem, he, that he'll do that, he'll make that decision, and doesn't bother him at all. So he's like Vanilla Ice. If there's a problem, yo, he'll solve it. And in the TV show, he does murder people. He straight up murders people, and, and, and he's the good guy of the, of the show. He's kind of an antagonist more than a protagonist. Maybe. Well, you know, he's, you don't, when you watch the show, the people he kills are genuinely shitty people. Gotcha. Um, they're, he, he, kills all, he kills murderers. Or does that make him an anti-hero? I think anti-hero would be anti-hero, not anti-hero. Moral, morally gray. I mean, yeah. he is a murderer. He should be arrested. He should go to prison for what he does. But at the same time, you're glad that he has done those things. <laughs> Did you ever kill anybody? Yeah, but they were all bad. Have you ever killed anyone? Yeah, but they were all bad. One scene in particular, he is on a f- fighting a bad guy on a fire escape. And he kills the bad guy by grabbing his necktie and leaping off the edge of the fire escape and just dangling there, all like 300 pounds of him or however much he weighed, 250 pounds, choking the guy to death. Just lets go of the necktie and walks away like, yeah. like nothing happened. Like, okay. that guy's dead. I don't need to do Doesn't hang around to tell the police what happened. Almost what? as cool as when Danny Trejo slit a guy's belly open, grabbed his intestine, and then used that to swing down over a balcony. What was that? Machete. Ah. Yeah. One of the best I movies ever. I never actually saw it. Oh, God. It's just, yeah. And then he, uh, after that, he started wrangling mm-hmm. um, uh, Rancors. 
they never show the internal clock in this movie. Like the setting him mm. setting his own, own alarm clock, him always knowing what time it is. Maybe they thought that would be too weird for the audience. I don't know, but it's a really interesting character trait that they just didn't show. That might turn it back more into like a supernatural power. If they showed any kind of animation to it or any kind of... Yeah. So I guess yeah, Maybe see. that's a creative choice they did, but yeah. one other character trait, and this is minor, um, Jack Reacher doesn't like to drive, which makes sense because he's always hitchhiking and taking the bus, walking. Um, he, de- he doesn't drive. He doesn't own a car, doesn't want to own a car. He drove in the military because he had to, but he doesn't like to drive. He's always happy to let somebody else drive. And in this TV show, they show him, like, being interested in a cool-looking car, Mm -hmm. which is extremely out of character. No. And maybe it's because when the books were written versus when the movie comes out, but he's also not good at technology. He would be completely lost if he handed him a smartphone. Gotcha. Whereas in this, he's not at all shy about using technology, but I guess it would make sense if he's supposed to be a younger version of the character set now. But he's he's just not interested in modern society at all. No driver's license, mortgage insurance claims, no online profile at all. The only proof Jack Reacher exists is the fact that he's sitting in that room. But I strongly recommend the show for anybody that's an action fan. Uh, if you've read the books, you're going to like the uh, TV show even more. I think this is a rare case where you will enjoy the show more having read the books versus... Oh, I thought you were going to say the, the- show was better than the books. No, no, no. Oh, okay. No, they're not. Okay. But, but you'll enjoy it more. Yeah, I, I really think that you would enjoy this show more if you've read the book, where most of the time, if you've read the book, it might detract from the show. Like, you already yeah. know it's, it's going to happen. You feel like the show is pissing on the book, basically, more or less. Yeah, although this follows the plot point of The Killing Floor is the book that it adapts, and it follows the plot almost exactly. There's a few <laughs> minor divergences, but it follows it like 90% exactly. <laughs> Um, but I actually think that knowing about the character before you see the character will make you enjoy the character more in the show. So I would recommend reading, maybe read a different Jack Reacher book. Um, you don't have to read them. You don't have to read them in order. Maybe read Die Trying or one of the other early books. You don't need to read this book to, you just need to, or even one of the short stories, one of the novellas. Um, avoid one that shows him as a military cop. There's a few prequels. Get one of the short stories where he's a wanderer, goes into town. There's I'll put a I'll put an example title up on the screen here, um, but even if you don't know anything about the Jack Reacher character, it works as just a solid action shoot 'em up, and it's fun to watch. Legs a little bit in the middle, um, as so many of these things do these days. As a action adventure TV show, I'd give it maybe a seven and a half out of ten. As a Jack Reacher adaptation, I give it maybe a 9 out of 10. Hmm. It doesn't quite translate as well. The car thing gets you. It, it doesn't translate as well to film as I thought it would. But I think as this Alan Richson character gets older, I think he'll grow into the character more. And I think that it's on the right trajectory to become an excellent show. relate to Jack Reacher because he has a case of wanderlust. He wants to go to new places all the time, and I love to travel. I love to take really long road trips. And, and it, murder people while I'm on my road trips. Yes. <laughs> but I love I love to listen to the audiobooks of Jack Reacher while I'm traveling. They're, oh, God. Yeah. They're, they're perfect. Sense. Those books are perfect travel companions. Yeah. So, highly recommend the books if you're an all a literary person. Don't expect great high literature these are airport bookstore you know type books they're not meant to be taken overly seriously they're just fun and if you just enjoy them for what they are a fun character killing the bad guy it is exactly what it is i will ruin your life with one phone call i'll end your life with one phone Thanks again for watching our YouTube channel. Please hit the subscribe button and share and all that other YouTube bullshit that I'm supposed to say because this is a YouTube show. Yes, and here's Hulk Hogan.
<laughs> I wish I could unsee that. <laughs> Referring to Hulk Hogan, not the Reacher show. I like the Reacher. <laughs> oh, and I'm also in the middle of watching Titans, um, DC's Titans on HBO Max. And you can tell that Jack Reacher put on, or the Al Richen actor put on some muscle. Um, mm. He's beefier in this mm. uh, than he was on that show. Mm. But anyway, that's uh, a whole lot of beefy. <laughs> Have you ever felt?